Welcome. I'm here with David Isaacs. He's the advisory board chairman of A7FL. David, thanks for joining us. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Awesome. Really excited to get started here. You guys have a really unique concept and we're excited to learn more and bring some of this story to our audience. So let's just dive right in. Tell me about the A7FL. What makes you guys different than other football leagues? Well, if you see any video of our league, you know immediately we're different because we're no helmets, no pads, seven on seven, full contact tackle football. So it is strikingly different when you see it. Uh, people first thought is this is crazy. But if you played football like I did a very long time ago in somebody's backyard, this is exactly how we played. And, you know, what we've got is a really exciting game. Someone discussed, uh, described it as the Rucker League for football. And I think that's exactly what it is. You're up close and personal. You really get to, you know, see the guys and see the, the athleticism. Uh, we, we have tons of viral videos online. But it's just, just as exciting, maybe even more exciting than NFL style football. And I think it's kind of the wave of the future in terms of where sports are going. Absolutely. And and something interesting that we've seen come out of this is how, how does the A7FL remind you of the early UFC? What kind of parallels can we draw there? You know, I was one of the co-founders of the UFC. And when we first started seeing uh, no holes barred fighting, which it was called at that time, the, the thing that we noticed was number one, people were drawn to it like crazy. They couldn't take their eyes off it. So the A7FL has that. So you still get all the excitement, but you actually get to see the guys up close and personal. And for all of our athletes, it's really important to be able to go out there and play Sunday after Sunday and then go out and work regular jobs Monday through Friday. Because ours is a league that's made up of folks who, who you know, have played college football, have played high school football. You know, they're looking for the next step in their career. And that was kind of what the early UFC was. We were finding martial artists who were working in dojos, training in different schools, um, but they really had an urge to compete and couldn't find the next level. So we're providing that next level for football players. Um, and, you know, they, they're excited. There are so many players who, you know, play college football. There are 700 NCAA accredited college football programs. There are only 32 NFL teams. So there are tons and tons of super talented players coming out of high school, coming out of college, who want to play football, and we're giving them an avenue to do that. Absolutely. And then looking at kind of a larger scale picture here, but what's the five-year plan for the league? Why do you think now is the good investable time as far as opportunity goes for the league itself? This is really kind of the inflection point for our league. You know, when I started working with uh, the A7FL about two years ago, uh, they'd really come, the sport had come together, the terms of the rules um, and the early, early teams. Uh, but we had two divisions focused on the Northeast, now we're up to nine divisions all across the country. You know, we've got over 750,000 social media followers. Uh, we're broadcast on Fight and Fubo Sports Network. Uh, we've got Wave TV as an online partner. So we've really taken that move from kind of a backyard uh, recreational league to a professional sport. And it's just starting. We've got a very unique model where we have local divisions. So every city where we have a division has at least four teams. And that means we're going to be able to blanket the country with teams. So we've got nine divisions this year uh, from four divisions last year. Uh, by next season, maybe we'll have 16 divisions, even more. We're already taking applications. So that's why this league is really about to take off, because people are seeing it more. They're starting to follow the players and the teams more. And that's when this league really gets interesting. Our media rights get more valuable. We sell more sponsorships. And we draw even better football players. And that's really what, the, what it's all about, having great football players and showing the fans great football, seven on seven, you know, no helmets, no pads. That's awesome. And, and considering that, you know, when it comes to creating that impact and creating that kind of effect, what type of impact does a David Meltzer or a Dr. Jen Welter kind of bring to this league in terms of getting in front of people? You know, one of the things I have really been excited by over the last couple of years is seeing other people get excited by the league. So we knew we had fans online. We knew there were different pockets of fans and we would get comments from various celebrities and, and like Snoop Dogg or football players. And so but, but what we really needed to do was bring in, you know, people who had knowledge of sports and who had knowledge of fan bases and who really were just as excited as we were. So David Meltzer, who used to be partners with Lee Steinberg, has come on board and he now owns the Los Angeles division. Um, he's currently a partner with Warren Moon, uh, first black quarterback in the NFL Hall of Fame. So he's very deep in sports. He, you know, he's an influencer online. And that he's as excited as we are is, is really, really, you know, telling for me kind of the, the leveling up of the league. 
And Dr. Jen Welter is just a force of nature. You know, she's the first woman to ever coach in the NFL. That is only part of her story. Um, she has really taught us about kind of tackle culture around the world. And so what I, I think is important with bringing on these new advisors and division owners is they all bring a level of expertise that we add to the league. And we kind of have multiple people spreading the word and adding their two cents and bringing in their partners. And that's really going to accelerate our development. Absolutely. And great point there talking about accelerating the development. Talk a little bit about the expansion. What else should we expect to see this upcoming season? Well, I mean, our expansion has been quicker than uh, any of us really expected. So we went from two divisions two years ago, four divisions last year. Uh, then we sold five divisions and now we have nine divisions going into 2022. So that each of those divisions have a minimum of four teams. That means we're going to have 36 teams all across the United States. And we still haven't hit some of the biggest markets in the country. We've only got one Midwest team division out there. We don't have any in Texas. We've only got one in Florida. You know, we're really set up to grow. Here in California, we can handle more divisions. You know, football is still the most popular sport in the United States. It's the most, uh, you know, kids participate in it more than any other sport. So we feel we've got a lot of room to grow. And, you know, there is no minor league professional football. There really is only NCAA and then there's pros and there's just a huge gap there. And, and we think we can fill it across the country. So there may be 36 divisions. There could be really quite a lot of divisions out there. You know, and then we're really going to you know, continue to raise the level of play. We find players, you know, when we're in Ohio, uh, you know, there are great football players in Ohio. We know that. Wait till we get to Texas. That'll be exciting. You know, every time we talk about the expansion, we all get excited by the opportunity to add great players and great markets. And that's really going to help us be build the league overall. That's great. And of course, David, you have a goal of reaching $1 million on Start Engine with this current campaign. How close are you guys to achieving that? We've already raised over $600,000 on Start Engine, and we know we have a tremendous number of followers. Uh, so we think we've got everything we need to finish out this campaign strong. There's a lot of great news that's coming out right now. We've already been announcing it. Um, and this is really the opportunity for folks who want to get in the ground floor on a professional sports league at the best price. This is it. So as one of the people that started the UFC and everyone thought it was crazy uh, and then eventually it sold for $4 billion, I can say that's the time you want to get in. That's the time you want to invest your money because the returns you can make are really outstanding. I'm not saying we're going to necessarily uh, be the size of the UFC. But then again, there's no reason we can't be that big because honestly, football is a huge existing sport. We've got this tremendous young fan base. And really, this is that's what it's about. It's about attracting the fans of the future. And that's what, exactly what this league does. So I think we're on track to hit a million dollars by January 16th um, and looking forward to adding, uh, you know, some new investors and, you know, telling them the story over and over because it really is an exciting story. And it's fun to start a league and be part of that growth process. Absolutely. And then taking the large scale zoom out here, what's the one key takeaway you want fans to know about the A7FL? What should we have top of mind? You know, the world is changing all around us. The one true constant we see in entertainment is the value of live sports. So we combine the value of live sports with these viral video highlights that go crazy on social media. And that's the, the, the ticket. That's exactly the formula for success with young fans going forward in the sports world. That's great. David Isaacs, thank you so much for coming on and talking about A7L. Really excited to get you guys in front of the audience. Watch this Start Engine campaign come to conclusion and see what you guys do next. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.